So does the Nephite armor, headplate, breastplate, arm shields appear in the archaeological record of North America? And the answer is, yes, it does. Here's where you find it. This is the only scriptures you'll find mention of the armor. 4338, 4613, 4924, Helaman 1 and 4, 3 Nephi 4 and 7, Ether 15 and 15. This right here, notice the top. This is all solid copper from the Upper Peninsula. The four little circles there are grommets. These were held together with some type of a leather cap because archaeologists actually held that material in their hands again as they were uncovered from the mounds. But upon hitting the air, the stuff will literally crumbled to dust. And the big things on the bottom are the ear and cheek guards that were held within that headgear. And guess what the archaeologists call these? Copper headplates. Interesting. Here's another copper headplate. The top is the back, goes to the crown of the head, to the bottom. This is the part that comes all the way to the front. And the big uh, rabbit ear looking things would come down, and cover your temple, right down over your cheekbone. And notice the, the things coming off from the side. No doubt that was built to uh, some way help hold on the leather covering that would make all this uh, cling together as a headgear. Copper head plates. Here's a uh, woman and a man, possibly a husband and wife. They have been excavated. There's a copper axe head by the feet of the woman sitting down there. And at the top, the man, if you look real close to his head, he, he was buried with his copper head plate. So obviously he was a military guy. This is a breastplate they wore. They were not uh, fashion like we see in so many of our, our paintings. Uh, these were somehow tied on with, with, with sinew or ropes or cloth. They were fastened, and we don't know how they were fastened, but uh, we know that the cloth was attached here because the copper, as it oxidized, cloth is stuck to the back side of it, which also gives us patterns of the cloth. <clears throat> this object on the left is an arm shield. It has holes all the way around it, which means this thing was somehow was a sewn to a garment again to be worn. And the one to the right, that's a uh, epaulette that would lay on top of your shoulder to cover your, your collarbone up here. Again, here are three nice uh, copper spear points. Uh, they're really beauties. Notice the holes in the back help them be pinned to a shaft. Uh, there's only two places I'm aware of. Uh, they're in Waukesha, Wisconsin, and I believe by Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. When these copper points were found, the pins that held them in actually had an uh, iron rivet that uh, has survived uh, the test of time and, and the rust and the rot. So uh, the deduction, of course, there is to conclude that uh, these people did have iron. Alma 16 and 11. Nevertheless, after many days, their dead bodies were heaped up upon the face of the earth, and they were covered with a shallow covering. In the Midwest, we have a lot of burials, a lot of mounds, but we also have some mounds that we call battle mounds. And these battle mounds, in my opinion, fit the very description that Alma here is discussing. So let's have a look at a typical battle mound from the Midwest. You find these from Missouri all the way to New York. Wisconsin to Tennessee makes no difference. But what they represent when they're uncovered is this. As you see here, this pile of bones. Uh, no one has been laid in this burial here with any care or any uh, you know, ceremonial purpose. These people have all been just pitched in and uh, covered over. And what's, what's here is that we have men, we have women, and we have children in this battle mound. So this is, represents a form of genocide that has taken place. And again, these are all over the Midwest battle mounds.